Welcome to Crashing Game Night. My name is Matt Diorio. Tonight, voice actress Danielle McRae is Crashing Game Night along with my co-host, the Lions main, Jason Baladio. How's it going, guys? How's it going? And then uh, Dark Helmet returns, Theo Walski. Stop with the Dark Helmet! <laughs> no! That is not going to be a thing. I will put an end to this soon. I need to figure out a way, but I am not Dark Helmet. <laughs> we got it. So, uh... Danielle, how are you doing tonight? Doing pretty good. Staying cool and uh, playing some games and uh, trying to cope with quarantine life. <laughs> I think, aren't we all? Yeah. I, mean, I feel like, like I've said, like I'm pro level introvert, so like I'm used to this. This is this is where <laughs> I shine. It's like, oh, you guys are complaining about this being hard. I was like, nah. Let's go a couple. Let's go a few more months, and I'll show you how it goes. <laughs> Uh no. <laughs> I mean, come on, they've they've already uh canceled Comic Con. Uh KubuCon down in Australia just got postponed. Um what is it? The uh insane clown posse's little thing they do every year just got canceled. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Too much stuff is getting canceled. No, let's Gathering let's put a stop to it. Man. 2020's just canceled. 2020 <laughs> is just 20- canceled. It's just gone. <laughs> We're, we're starting New Year's as soon as quarantine's done, so that's when New Year's now begins. It's no longer January 1st. It's whenever quarantine nope. ends. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I'll, I'll go with that. I like that. <laughs> uh, we're not going to do a 2020 all over again, so instead of 2021, you know, 2020. 2022. <laughs> part so, that way the, so that way the Olympics is still 2020? Yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, like Olympic... <laughs> exactly so so danielle have you actually built like a little mini studio in your in your house then so you can actually keep recording and, and doing your voiceover work i have um i had a little studio beforehand before the pandemic started and so when i found out a lot of studios are doing remote recordings from home i had to kind of step it up so i literally bought a couple days ago a uh scarlet uh, I think it's like a Scarlet Solo mic series. I have the mic in there, the preamp, the headset, and uh, have some blankets coming so I can make like a little studio for it. So it's oh, almost wow. like I'm rebuilding from the ground up and uh, still trying to work on anime at home and video games at home. And yeah, that whole process. That's awesome. So now Very you're just nice. setting yourself up so that way you never have to leave ever again. You're just setting yourself <laughs> up to stay home now. Yeah, you <laughs> stay at home for record. Amazon. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> funny thing you mentioned that, though, Theo, is because a lot of companies are, are starting to rethink now that they've deployed a lot of workforce to home. It's like, well, do we just go to a work-from-home structure? Right. I mean, everybody, everybody boasts about wanting to work in their pajamas. Let's do it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, at this point, we just need to put on a haptic suit, put on the visor, and go live inside, you know, Ready Player One. Yes. I'm serious, wow. at this point. Indeed. Yes, please. Lately. <laughs> I want to go for those keys. Uh, I, I can't. Are we talking? Okay, hold on. Are we talking the the book keys? Or are we talking the movie keys? Movie keys. Said read, read the book. Not even that. They're just they're a lot more fun, man. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> I would definitely be uh, driving the DeLorean. Well, that DeLorean. Yep. A Kira bike, dude. A Kira bike. Oh. Not the not the cloud bike, you know. Not the cloud. <laughs> no, the no, like wink, that, wink. No. I mean, <laughs> that'd be Jerry. Oh no, that'd I be mean, Soldier. That'd be totally Soldier. Soldier. That'd be Soldier. Yeah. I mean, if I really could, it'd be. Uh, I mean, if I'm really picking like a movie vehicle, it'd be either Flynn's light cycle, yep. okay. or it'd be Mavericks F14. Just saying. Cool. You would go plain cheater. Cheater. <laughs> You'll fly over the whole thing and just go well, straight for the key. But that's the thing is like in the book though, you're not you're the the challenges are different. Well, yeah, I know. So they didn't have the race. So like none of it requires actually like flying the places or driving the places. So like in the book, he actually has like this whole remote outpost where he's got like the Millennium Falcon, he's got an X Wing, he's got all these different famous ships just mm. in a hangar so jason yo what's up real quick so uh how's that uh how's that costco minute uh that costco, the minute. 
it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's getting better, you know. Um, it's a little tough still um, because of the whole uh, farms being, or the, what is it, production plants that are being taken down in Iowa. So uh, the freezer section in our zone is just being shot like no tomorrow. Mm-hmm. So for those people who are trying to go to Costco, look for the chicken in the freezer first, then get the toilet paper, then get the paper towels. Try not to ask for Clorox or Lysol products because they're more li- than likely sold out. Mm-hmm. And that, that means the people at my Target, I went to Target today and those, Whoever did this would put those people to shame because I randomly found a basket in a shelf that had chicken in it. That was it. Nowhere even near the grocery section, just in a shelf with raw chicken. Just hanging out. Wow. Chilling. It's like, okay. Dang, that's a waste. Way to waste everything. Like, yep. somebody could use that. <laughs> yep. All right. So let's, uh, let's get into a little bit of news before we uh... – dive into Danielle's career and we get to know the uh, woman behind uh, Gwen from FF7. So uh, Ubisoft announced Assassin's Creed Valhalla is coming out. Valhalla. Valhalla. Or Valhalla. Yeah, and it's, it, you it's know, like it's Vikings like Assassin's kind, right? It is yeah. Vikings, yeah, absolutely. Um, it's got kind of that, that feel of like an like odyssey did but it seems like it's got a little bit of a god of war vibe to it too which i was afraid this was going to happen when they were kind of rumoring it to be you know viking mythology you know mytho and all that so i mean i just it just feels that like it's starting to branch off to what are we going to try and pull from next you know like Mm. i feel like after Vikings, they might just try to do samurais. And but, I mean, that's that kind of that that's was like the rumor. brilliance behind it, though. That's the brilliance behind it. You have mm-hmm. such a huge library of stuff to pull from because you're basing everything off of history. So you have thousands upon thousands of years to go through. Yeah, of course. But it's just like the, the progression that like the original Assassin's Creed had was just so like fluid is so like natural and then now it's just like okay let's just like jump around and like let's check out oh where uh mm-hmm. let's check out uh i don't know this point in time check out this point in time mm-hmm. i don't know it's 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 I, it's good but at the same time i'm like okay now it's just getting a little a little too much yeah i i would agree it, it's gotten to that point um I still have to play Odyssey and Origins, so we'll yeah. see how those fully go don't, through. But don't uh, get me wrong; like as long as they keep up with the that like what is it the history de- right. DLC, where you can like roam and like learn about the everything about that time period. Oh, mm-hmm. that'll still be awesome! Like, please keep that in. I yeah. please keep that in. Well, we'll see now. Danielle, I saw you tweet out the other day that you're kind of looking for a game to play that'll keep you enthralled like FF7 did. Yeah. Don't so, say it, Matt. Don't say it. Don't do it. Don't say it. <laughs> don't say what? You know Animal what crack? we're talking about. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, actually, this week, um, Sony came out with uh, some new dates. Uh, Herman Hulse, the new head of Worldwide Studios, former head of Gorilla. Uh, put out a post on the PlayStation blog. Last of Us 2 is officially going to launch on June 19th. Official, nice. Yes, so it's only getting, it got pushed back just a smidge more, um, which in turn goes to Tsushima, speaking of the samurai era and the feudalist Japan, that's getting pushed back to July 17th. Oh, gotcha. So that'll be uh, interesting because that is uh, my son's birthday. <laughs> so, oh, nice. Um, yeah. So <laughs> he'll want to play with nice. you. Yeah. He hey he did God of War with me and he did Spider Man. Exactly. So, so oh, nice. So I don't know. It depends on how it depends on how violent Ghost of Tsushima is. It is Sucker Punch, so it has the potential to go either way. Um, definitely won't wasn't. play. Definitely won't play Last of Us Part Two with him. <laughs> um, now 
Danielle, does you want to pay play... for therapy for the rest of his life? Right. Oh no. Um, <laughs> now, Danielle, did you ever play Last of Us Part One? So I did not play that. I watched an entire walkthrough. The first I played, I played the demo at E3 mm-hmm. a while, a long time ago, and then I watched a walkthrough. It was something about that first part of the game that I'm like, if the whole game was going to be like that, I'm just going to be crying the entire game. So I went and watched an entire walkthrough. But a friend of mine said, it's better to play it because it's a lot better to experience it instead mm-hmm. of watch it. It'll form your own experience. And I'm like, I'll think about that. So I think it was the month when PlayStation had The Last of Us Remastered for free on PSN. And I do have it, but I haven't played it yet. I would recommend it. Yes, the beginning, yeah. the very beginning of the game is is a tearjerker, and it does it does get to you. But the rest of the game is fantastic. It's got a great story. Um, it's like The Walking Dead, but it actually has a you know beginning, middle, and an end. Hmm. rather than the longest middle ever known to man (laughs) that's not even like not even following comics anymore yes i you know what i think the last time i watched walking dead glenn died that's a while ago i didn't even get that far i (laughs) ended it like wow season five was when i stopped Oh, so you didn't get to see Dean Winchester show up and, you know, start taking a baseball bat to everybody? That wasn't... Se- <laughs> he came in in season four. Negan? Did Negan show? Yeah. Negan. Yeah, Negan was four? in early. Okay. I didn't think it was season four, but... All right. And then the last tidbit of news, which, you know, Danielle, I know you, you play your, your Switch quite a bit. Um, Nintendo had... 160,000 accounts hacked since the beginning of the month. Um, Hackers went in and accessed account information using old Nintendo network IDs, which were predominantly used on the Wii U and the 3DS. Uh, Data births, nicknames, countries, and email addresses were uh, accessed. Um, So any of those accounts that were hacked had their uh, passwords reset and an email sent out to those uh, those customers. Nintendo is now um, recommending that all users switch to two-factor authentication. I tested it to see what it was like. Basically, they're using Google Authenticator for it. And mm-hmm. they're giving you eight backup keys, so if you happen to lose you know, access to your phone, you still have the ability to get into your account. That's the one thing I hate about Google's Authenticator is that you have to have the backup keys. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you can't get in your account. So, um, you know, at least Nintendo kind of came forward and did did it, but they didn't do so until after all the tweets had gone out that people were having their accounts hacked and people were uh, seeing their funds being used for Fortnite. (laughs) For for the record. For the V-Bucks. I mean, the Rick Roll dance. if they were if they were getting the Rickroll dance, that's okay, you know. But other than that, you know, it it's sad, but at least they kind of got it nipped. Hopefully, um, before a lot more accounts have been um, hacked, because as all of us on this podcast who all have switches, I mean, come on, there's been millions of switches sold, so it could have been a lot worse. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yep. So let's let's move on to the whole reason Danielle is here. Yay. Hang out. And let's and let's let's talk about your career, Danielle. Hey, of course. So let's let's introduce everybody to uh, your backlog. So you were in League of Legends as Karma the Enlightened One, which the second I asked, I told I told Jason that you were in League of Legends. He's like, oh, who is she? What? what? <laughs> <laughs> you were also in, you've been Hagara the Stormbringer in World of Warcraft, the Cat, uh, Cataclysm expansion, as well as Hearthstone Heroes of Warcraft. Which, that's impressive to have the same character repeating. Which is yeah, great. just to kind of come back, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you don't. A lot of times you don't see that, especially World of Warcraft. They create so many different characters. It's like, hey, we're just going to do something new. Um, 
you have you were in uh, Wing Commander Saga. You played Pinwheel in Skullgirls. Love Skullgirls. Yeah, it's so good. Yes. I love the artwork in Skullgirls. Such a different. It's so awesome. Yeah, I love it too. <laughs> you were in uh, the Dead Island spinoff Epidemic. You played Milo in the Detective Pikachu game. Mm-hmm. Uh, how, were... how dare you skip over some of the best anime that she is in? <laughs> Dude, hold come on. on now. Theo, come on. You really think I'm not prepared? Chronological order, man. Chronological order here. Okay. <laughs> you want to go chronological <laughs> Wow. All right. I was trying to just touch on some things here and there, but damn, dude. That's right. I'm calling you out. <laughs> ah. Oh, no. <laughs> well, you were in uh, Heroes uh, Clash of Kings as Dead Guinevere with Austin Lee Matthews, who we had on a couple weeks ago. Uh, you know, Soldier uh, Third Class Roche. You are also uh, in Magi, the Labyrinth of Magic, as Orba, with Austin. Such a, such a good with Austin, show. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you were in Monster Prom as Amira, which the tweet, kind of I just saw the tweet today, is Monster Prom is going to the Switch. Yes, it is. Oh, and really? I didn't realize yeah. that it was... It, yeah, and I didn't realize they were on their second year anniversary. Like, it's been two years already? Like, wow. That's crazy. Yeah, and yeah, I saw the, the news that's going to the Switch, so I was like, oh, okay. And then you were, uh, you've got Ascendance of a Bookworm as Ralph. Mm-hmm. You were in uh, MGS uh, Philanthropy, which is Metal Gear Solid. Uh, you were uh, Gargantia on the... Or sorry, you were Andrea on Gargantua of the Virtuous Planet. And then Theo over here, Mr. Anime. What other <laughs> ones are you wanting to, to touch on there, Theo? I mean, you're saying you're I, I'm, ha- I'm happy that you definitely said Magi. And, but you did skip over the overhypes, even though I'm a fan of the overhype. But Sword Art Online. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sword Art, yes. Yes. <laughs> so, I love Sword Art, Theo. Theo, what's been your... Outside of what Final Fantasy has, that game in itself, it's its own beast. But what's been your favorite project up until now to that you've worked on? Every time I'm asked that question, I feel so guilty. Because it's like picking a child. Like, which one is better than all the other kids? Oh, no, you can there say the first. You can say the oldest. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, my God. There's, there's a lot that I'm really happy about. Um, there was a game called Mega Dimension Neptunia Victory 2, and the reason why I love that one is, and I could probably tell a story about how I got that role. There's a character in there who's pretty much a spinoff to Square Enix, the company, and Cloud Strife. And um, I joked throughout the friend, I'm like, that's kind of a precursor to me being cast in FF7 Remake. So uh, I like that character as well. Uh, as uh, Painwheel and Skullgirls. I'm going to go with those two. And uh, definitely Magi. I liked uh, Orba in that one just because he reminded me of Rufio from Hook. I want to record it. Yes. That's so awesome. I have so many favorites. (laughs) Funny you mentioned Rufio because we actually got to meet the actor at E3. Awesome. He's so cool. I really appreciate it. And he's like... He was really cool. He just stopped talking for a bit because he was there at the time. He was part of a studio project that was making a video game. Um, and after that, at E3, we never really heard anything about it. You know, and I follow him on, on social media, and I never saw anything relating to any games or stuff like that. But he's moved on to do, you know, he's wrote, written a book and everything. So, Wow. Um, but, yeah, it's Hook. I can remember seeing that movie in the theaters starting the food fight and yelling food fight in the theater. Yes. <laughs> you would. I make it attempt to watch that movie once or twice a year. It's almost like a, a go-to. It's it, like a Thanksgiving Christmas kind of celebration uh-huh. for me. With oh, that that's movie. Awesome. <laughs> I love the movie. It's still, for me, it's still hard to watch some Robin Williams movies. Mm. Yeah. It really yeah, is. Okay. It's like, because he was such a gift to everybody, and he had such comedic talent and 
like for me, I still love Live on Broadway. That stand-up <laughs> is amazing. I still have that. I the have creation that of golf. Um, so which do you like working more on? Anime or video games? I know they're they're similar, but they both got their own different pieces to it. Yeah, um, so I love working on them both, but I think if I had to pick one, it would be video games. Because how I got started in this industry was I, when I was younger, I guess I can kind of get into my origin comic book story before we go forward. Um, when I was a kid, a lot like a lot of kids, they watch cartoons and they have their characters. But for me, I was like six or seven years old and I was thinking, these characters all have voice actors. There's someone behind the mic that's recording for them. So I always wondered what would it be like to record for, like, let's say, a show like Thunder, Thundercats or, or something. And <laughs> when I was younger, I would call voice acting garage recording because I had no idea what that world even was, I thought. Someone would gather around four or five actors in a the studio. They all share one boom mic in the same room. And then, then, like, the other half of the room is the director, writer, producer. One person does everything, which that's, that would be exhausting if that was the case, if they did everything. And uh, I was really curious about how to get into this business. So my mom was, like, saying, I told her about it. And she's like, that's really cool and everything, but I don't think that's a job. I think that's, they're, they're doing it for some friends. They're not getting paid. They're not really paying any bills with like their voices. And so that kind of made me a little bummed out. So uh, growing up uh, in high school, I wanted to take some sort of character design like course, which led later on in college to a character design for computer animation and computer graphics. Because originally I did want to work for Square Enix as I wanted to help out Tetsuya Nomura. I was I did not think clearly like the guy's okay with the character design, but I'm like, what if I can help him a little bit? <laughs> so that was my dream because I I figured if I can't do any sort of voice acting, maybe I can do my other side kind of passion, and that's character design. So my ADD kind of kicked in, and I just had I literally dropped the class. And I went and changed my major secretly to acting because a friend of mine who was really big into the acting scene in my, in my college, he knew that I really wanted to do voice acting for characters and especially video games. He was telling me, if you want to do this, you need to take some theater classes. And so I went to my counselor and I secretly just switched my major from character design to theater. And then a couple of years later, there's some classes here in LA. It was called Bang Zoom uh, Studio Classes. They do a lot of anime and video game work. They do Kill the Kill and Sword Online, League of Legends. And a friend of mine told me about it. And I went and took a class with them. And so the teacher, who's also a director, casting director, came to me and told me, you sound really good. You really have an art for um, listening to direction. And you take it very well. So we can't promise you anything. We can't promise you a job. But I can promise that you will be able to audition for this studio and possibly book some work so that's wow. kind of how it started wow and, uh, yeah and so my very first credit was league of legends oh, kind of snowball from there so let me ask you a question how did it go over with the folks when you told them hey by the way i'm switching my major or that you um, had already done it so they they didn't really seem upset by it or like surprised by it i didn't want to tell my mom because at that time she was helping me pay for my books and everything so i <laughs> pretend that i'm like taking a computer animation class I was like how was school today it's like oh it was great it was great we were like <laughs> we, did Herb, we did some maya some pretty studio max and i was over here learning how to create a character how to do improv and <laughs> eventually she did find out because i bought a lot of theater books it's like what is all this voice to performer stuff i'm like uh oh <laughs> uh, it was only a matter of time to find out. <laughs> so let's talk FF7. Yes. Oh, yes. The, the nice big game that is FF7 that is selling millions of copies around the world. Um, oh, is it? So, I haven't heard of this game. You haven't heard of this game? Well, <laughs> I mean, so you've seven. never... <laughs> You've never finished one before, so... What, what is this Final Fantasy? Why did they remake it? <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, it, 
Theo already got enough smack from Soldier First Class last week yeah, about, yeah, yeah. <laughs> about his Final Fantasy lore. So how did um how did you come, you know, how did you come to 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 get the audition, the role? Did they did they come to you? Was it your your representation that said, hey, there's um, auditions going on? So I I'm gonna be shameless about this. I let my fangirl take over. Oh yes. Over. And I I'm a huge fangirl for games and voice actors and stuff, but there's times where I kinda have to keep it in check. But when I first I think it was the very first trailer when they talked about the remake years and years ago, I was trying to figure out what studio is gonna be recording for this game. I think it was back in twenty fifteen or sixteen. And I was kind of just being an internet sleuth and I'm like, there's gotta be a way for me to figure out who's going to work on this game before they announce their involvement in it. So I talked to a friend of mine and they were telling me, because I had my doubts on a certain studio, and I'm like, I think they're going to get the, li- the rights and the local- localization for it. And like, probably. So I go and I email them in 2016 and I asked them, hey, because I worked on a project before with them, it was called Phantom Gate. And so I went and sent them a follow-up and I said, hey, how you doing? Um, I was just wondering if by chance, if you ever, if you ha- knew if you're working on FF7 Remake, and if so, if I can audition for it. It was kind of like a cold submission slash mm-hmm. follow-up. <laughs> I was curious, and I was like, I could be completely wrong. The studio may not have any involvement in this game whatsoever. And about three years later, I hear back from them, and they literally come to me and say, are you free to come in next Tuesday at like two to four? And they didn't tell me what I was recording. So uh, I kind of figured, because I titled the email Final Fantasy VII Remake Request Inquiry Audition, and they replied <laughs> right to it a few years later. I'm like, no, they didn't. No, they didn't. And so yeah. when I go into the booth, I find out that, well, they, they had a code name for it. I think it was called The mm-hmm. End. So I had no idea what I was recording for. I was thinking maybe it's Final Fantasy, or it could be something else. I could be selecting myself out. Yeah. But when I went to record, and I saw the script. The first words I saw, their names I saw, was Tifa and Shinra. I'm like, wait a minute. Wait a second. Oh, <laughs> exactly what I said. That's not a dead so, giveaway. Light just goes off. Yeah, yeah, hey. So, yeah, so the studio reached out to me, and they didn't have me audition. They just had me come in one day and recorded for like three, four hours, and then I was done. But it was definitely an experience. Wow. Oh. Dang. So what was it like seeing your character on the screen when you played through the game? So I usually uh, get, I don't want to say nervous when I hear myself on screen for anime or video games, but I never get used to it. And I've come to the point where it's kind of good for me to not get used to it because it makes me feel like I can do better. So it's Mm. kind of like a perfect kind of mindset. But when I heard uh, Gwen on screen when I first played the game, I think it was Power Pick, so I watched him a lot. And he had this whole tutorial on how to get through certain side quests. And then my character popped up and I heard her. I'm like, okay, that this is real. This is definitely. <laughs> so was Cloud. This is exactly what we went through in the booth. Um, it was surreal. It was very surreal. <laughs> now, with that, I, I do have to ask the one question because we've gotten several different answers from several of your co-stars in and Vic Chow and Mallory Lowe and stuff like that. Did you had you actually played through the game, the original? Yeah, I okay. played through it five times for like years. I would just go back, <laughs> and that game would kind of come back to me. I, I loved seven and I loved nine a lot, but I would always seven would be my go-to. I would go to seven mainly because I had a huge crush on Vincent Valentine. Like I loved that guy so much, and um, I would go back for him and for the story as well. But I was very familiar with it. Your uh, your co-star Austin, who is also pseudo your your writer and your kind of director for a certain little radio drama on YouTube called Megaton Girl. Um, yeah. Vincent was always in his party, so he was kind of he was kind of gushing about Vincent when we had him on a couple weeks Austin ago. Austin knows where it's at. I really appreciate him. He knows exactly <laughs> where it's at. <laughs> 
Jason, you want to yeah, ask so, your question? Uh, so, as always, every <laughs> time, <laughs> every time we have a guest that actually has played it, what was your like your go-to team? Your your you stuck with them through the end. Well, definitely Vincent. Um, Vincent, I would always either switch up Red Thirteen to Tifa. It'd be one of one or the other. Um, or if it's Vincent, I'll sometimes bring Barrett in. But I'd really switch them up, and mm. I think, it, of course, Cloud. Cloud, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I always wonder because it's uh like, because there's so many of the characters that are just so like they have their own story. It's just like I'm waiting to see in the next ones where like okay, how their story is going to combine. And then a lot of people that I've been asking, it's like okay, what's your what's your go-to team? And it's like okay, like how far in the game do we have to wait till we have like our our, our core core team members. Yes. I will say when we get to that point, whenever we get to that point, I will shed some tears just because it'll take me back when I played the original and we had the core team and all the people in the party. Um, oh, yeah, I played some Sid, too. I almost forgot about him. I played some Love Sid, Sid as well. With, yeah. So I guess I played a bit of everybody, but some more than others. Mm-hmm. My core was always Cloud, Tifa, and Sid. All Sid. Yeah, I was <laughs> I was all about having uh, Cloud, Vincent, and it would switch between Kate, Sith, and Sid. Nice. I wonder if they're gonna ch- like how they're gonna go with that pronunciation of Kate, Sith, because right. we kind of all kind of grew up thinking it was you know Mako, and it's actually Mako, and yeah. you know. Don Corneo is actually Don Corneo, you know. That's you know well to adjust to because I was always calling him Don Corneo. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's because well, I finally I and they're finally like got the through. Uh, yeah, um, <laughs> and High Dagger and like some of the different pronunciations. I'm like, okay, we're, we're good. <laughs> I mean, yeah. you know, um, yeah, I finally got through uh, Wall Market. This week, nice. so slowly getting there. Slowly, slowly but surely. Yep. So, what's been your reactions to the fans? Like, once you kind of let out the news to your followers and stuff like that that you're in the game, what's been the reaction from the fans that's most surprised you? So, I think just me hearing from the fans is surprising enough because this character has a very small appearance in this, and it's just a, a large game. But I would get people telling me, you know, how did how do I become a voice actor? And they'll be curious in it. Or a lot of times there are people saying, oh, Yas Queen. I already know she's a queen because she, she's telling Cloud off. Like, uh, <laughs> she really didn't care. She did not care at all. Like, she'd have him do a side mission. And after he was done, she'd kind of just say, well, okay, how was you then? But then she would go secretly tell somebody, oh, by the way, he's great. I don't want to tell him in person. You tell him for me that he's great. <laughs> I just want to be a hard ass to him. But I would get a lot of positive feedback. Some people would tell me that, you know, I can't believe you're actually in this game. And some friends of mine knew that it was a dream to, of mine to be in a Final Fantasy game. And I said, I don't even care if I would be Soldier A dying to the pillar or something. I was I really <laughs> wanted to be in a Final Fantasy game. And this happened. So this was definitely, I feel like every part in the game is a huge part, even if it's like, couple lines just because this game is such a huge game that it's every part matters i feel definitely it's like the star wars thing you know everyone wants to be in that star wars and once you get in you're like all right like you feel like this completion you're like okay i did i did it i did it yeah Mm -hmm. jason jason's just gonna be a storm you know jason's just gonna be a stormtrooper doing janitorial cleanup dude i don't care like (laughs) square enix square enix i'm still uh you know still here if you have any job Uh openings i don't care what it is if it's opening the doors for people you know checking people in cleaning toilets yo square enix hit me up hit me up please yeah that's been the running joke for a long time. <laughs> hey, I will, I will, I will, I will do anything for you, Square Enix. I'll do anything for you. <laughs> you what know, does it be like? Do you like to like, ref- like clear the refreshments and have new mints in the, t- the waiting tables and like some pastries and fill the drinks up and stuff? You need, you need a coffee. You know, hey, I got you. Jason does. Yeah. 
Jason does clean up well and he does look good in the uh you know a tux uh, slash yeah. suit. So hey. you know, I oh, think yeah. he can pull it off well. I don't think he's quite tur- I don't think he's Turks level, but oh, man. You know. <laughs> if the Turks a real thing, man, I'll I'll find me up. I mean, maybe <laughs> the maybe the receptionist at the honey bee inn. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will do that too. I will do that too. Oh, janitorial for the honey bee if, if it gets me a job <laughs> <squirt. laughs> Now, Daniel, have you had any negative feedback from like the fans? Because I know a lot of the fans have been kind of divided on the voice cast, right? Of Advent Children versus Remake. Have you experienced any of that negativity? I actually haven't. It's all been positive and it's all been full of love. Like it's been an over a well, overwhelming amount of love. And I, I've been getting a lot of Eric cloud shippers because I put up something a, a week ago or so where I said, I will always ship Eric and cloud. And all of a sudden I should have known what happened. All the cloud shippers were like, Oh queen. Yes. I knew you're great. And then I would get some people coming and following me. Cause I'm, they're like, Oh, she knows, she knows. But um, it's all been positive. There was one person when I made the announcement of me being Gwen, they said, oh, you're spoiling the game. Like, now I know she's in it. Like, I know what she looks like. But I don't know if they were trolling or if it's just they were being like, serious about me spoiling uh, a side quest character. But, but other, other than that, it's all been positive and fun and very overwhelming and full of love. I, I appreciate it. And that that is great to hear because there has been a lot of a lot of negativity around it too because a lot of people have said oh we're gonna go for a petition we need to get them to record with the original guy I, you know now I gotta ask you a quick question before we kind of move on to our, our next segment is you just got done watching Alita Battle Angel yes <sighs> and I love it I love it a lot I watched it three times. <laughs> I love that movie. I raved about that movie the day that it came out. I absolutely love that movie. Isn't it insane just the ability that they did for the special effects on everything? Like I almost felt like it was just so seamless on how they interchanged everything throughout that movie. It was amazing. And I love the OVA too. So when I coming from that to this movie, I'm like, oh, they did everything right. I can't yeah. think of anything they didn't do right. Yeah, that's the hard part where it's like this, like, I mean, it's kind of like the Final Fantasy thing where it's like, how much of it is going to be like, like, one to one versus like, are they going to go in a certain direction? And it's like, oh, man, like, when it's just done right, it just gives you goosebumps. Yeah, Yeah, it feels amazing when when it's done right. I just I just had to bring that up because Theo loves Alita. Yes, that I do. I love it, too. I am a, I am a huge lover for that movie, and I need a, a sequel like today. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I don't. Theo, have you heard anything about them doing a sequel for it? Uh, I have left it open for. I haven't heard anything. I know that there's room in the storyline to still do it. Um, I really hoped so because I really want to. I mean, I love that movie so much. If they put out a sequel during quarantine, I'm breaking into AMC theaters just so I can watch it. <laughs> Same. Same. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I gotta wait till December for that movie. And chances are theaters will probably be open by then. Maybe. So I'm gonna have maybe. to pay for it. Probably. Top you gotta wait for 2022, December. man. You gotta oh, wait for way. 2022. Uh-uh. No. December, man. <laughs> Top Gun 2. <laughs> oh, Top Gun 2. <laughs> Dude, I cannot wait. You would. I, st- oh, I yeah. still have yet to watch Top Gun. <laughs> what the? Wait, what? <laughs> still have yet to watch it. Wow. I, it has- I, st- I still say that Jerry kind of ruined it for me by showing me that YouTube video about saying how much um homosexuality is in that movie <laughs> because of the bromance and it but just kind of ruined it for me well, they have a, a hey they have a great soundtrack my mom it's a fantastic went, soundtrack yeah, it's, my, so i call it i, I joke with my mom because she watches it every time it's on cable and i called it soundtrack the movie 
She's like, it's not soundtrack the movie you're hating. And I'm like, okay, so what's it about? And she told me everything. She told me the entire story. And I'm like, you know the story. Because mm-hmm. every time she'd watch it, she would be all about the soundtrack. And I'm like, okay, you know your stuff. I'm going to stop messing with you now. <laughs> you know your yeah, stuff. Yeah. It's Kenny Loggins. It's volleyball, it's Kenny man. Loggins. Volleyball. <laughs> volleyball. The 14s. Well, I'm glad I know Jason's type now. He likes oiled up men it, playing on the beach, some volleyball, some short shorts, you know. You know, ready for that Just Summer like Olympics, man. That's <laughs> Summer Olympics, you know. Oh they got postponed, dude. <laughs> oh, give up the dream. Give up the dream, I, man. I will give you props to the Olympics for the beach volleyball because those guys are insane. If you ever watch those right. matches or even those matches like if you ever watch the ones that they uh play it like soccer volleyball like they only use their feet and everything and do cartwheel kicks in order to um spike it over that stuff's insane oh that's too much for me I, man. that's i, I love that they finally you know in 96 gave everybody that that shot for volleyball and whatnot on beach because I love I love beach volleyball. Indoor is fun and all, but I prefer the sand. Matt ADP. Hey, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Dude, everybody, okay. everybody asks me about that, and it's like, oh, is that Alien versus Predator? I'm like, no, it's volleyball. <laughs> because it is is um, ADP is you know, Association of Volleyball Professionals, which was um, one of the two the two leagues at the time. You had FIBA and you had the AVP and you had, you know, Karsh Cry and Ken Steffes and all them. And it was like, I, I loved it. I watched as much as I could. I was, you know, I played two man beach. I played indoor, you know, um, in the middle and whatnot. So it, it's something I've always, I've always loved and I, I miss playing it, but at this point there's no way my back could hold up to playing indoor anymore. There's no way. That's what you got Cody for, man. The Cody and Riley and right? all this stuff. They can, you know, live pri- they'll, they'll make a famous days. brother team in the Olympics, winning the gold, go. you know? Oh, <laughs> that'd be nice. <laughs> yep. So let's uh, let's kind of move on to, you know, what we've all been playing. So we'll, let's let Danielle start us off. What have you been playing lately outside of Final Fantasy VII Remake? Um, I miss Final Fantasy VII because I wanted to get a platinum on it, and I did. And so I was figuring out what should I play after. You play so I've been playing Final some Fantasy Spider. VII Remake? Yeah. <laughs> How? Yo, Dang, hey, you know yes. what? You know what? That like. Let me say, Soldier just started right working there. on that too. I know. Yeah, right? I felt, yeah so I, it was one of those games where I felt like I have to platinum this. I have to. I have to get it. Um, but so I've been playing Strider on PS4, and I've been loving it. And I've been playing a lot of Kirby's Dreamland on uh, the Switch. <laughs> oh, then how, Kirby. I gotta ask you, how insane was hard mode on FF7? So I was thinking it was gonna be like Dark Souls, <laughs> really hard. It's what everybody keeps saying. Challenge. Yeah, so I, that's what I was feeling. I'm like, so I played Bloodborne, I played some Dark Souls. I'm like, this is gonna be like Dark Souls. I'm gonna die a million times, aren't I? I died quite a bit, but it wasn't like Dark Souls. It had a learning curve to it. It was pretty challenging, but I wouldn't say it's impossible. Okay. Okay, because, yeah, that's, like, right now, like, I'm finishing up just the regular story. My wife's starting on hard mode right now, and she's like, yeah, right. like, it, it is, it changes how you've been playing the first time around. It's like, yeah. it shows you, like, okay, this is how you play. And then when you switch to hard mode, she's like, yeah, like, you have to be a lot more thoughtful of what yeah. you're doing. And, and the I don't thing know. about hard mode is they get rid of all your items. So you can't yeah. use your Phoenix down, you can't use your potions. Like you're, you're stuck with all your cures and your spells and everything. Mm. <clears throat> but the, but the, it, it's like a new game plus though, is it? Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh, so you at least get to carry over your, your materia and everything? Yep, you can carry everything over after you yeah. do oh, okay. so like a new game plus. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Which I appreciate that. I'm like, I don't want to start all over again. So you can't because, carry everything. Because fighting that that sewer monster right now, after oh, gosh. Uh, yeah. 
Dude, man, it has wiped me twice. Oh, and no. it's just like, he gets you down, and it's like, he just, he's relentless. So I'm like thinking, this on hard? No, thank you. <laughs> I'm good. You know, I just need to be able to beat him. You know, it's, but I, I like how the game does have those challenges that it will yeah. just, it'll have bosses that will just, it will take you to town if you can't, huh? you know, be tactical with it. Oh, yeah. So, Theo, what have you been playing outside of Animal Crossing? I hate that you got me into Animal Crossing <laughs> so <laughs> much. Why, is, why, Theo? Why? Of all the people, I thought you'd be on my side so, with this so one. So the the big thing that I've come to realize, especially with like my fascination with Destiny 2 and everything, is that I get hooked on the games that have the like the the little wins and like all the little wins that you can just complete every day. And it's just like, it's like, oh, this is this easy thing. Let me just do that real quick. Oh, crap. There's another really easy thing. Let me do that real quick. And it's just going <laughs> to keep building on until it's like, oh, man, I just spent four hours to build this little house, chop down all these trees, visit two islands or whatever. And yeah. <laughs> so I, I hate you, man, oh, so man. much. <laughs> See, this is why. This is why. <laughs> I, I mean, so I, many I, people playing, but I, they're like, "Oh, you need to get but that." But that's also Jay. the like, best thing about it too, because like we have our own little like friends group chat of what's going <laughs> on in each, other, in each other's island and like helping each other out. It's like, "Ooh, I want that item. Buy the, buy that for me and send it over." No, like that. no, yes. because it's like yep. it's just gonna seriously like, "Oh, today, oh, dude, come over. I got the bug guy today, or come over. I got the so, fisher." And I'm right. like, "Yo." No, and I'm like, stop it. Like, I'm in the middle of doing something else right now. I can't just, like, hold on. You don't hold have on. to. You can hold choose on. to. Well, we <laughs> did find out that Flick and CJ, you can't actually sell to them if they're not on your island. That's true. Oh, well, I don't know. So, what it's like, I, I tried selling to Flick on another person's island. It was like, no. I can't, man. Like, it's just, I've seen, like, my sister-in-law, oh. she's been playing it. And she's restarted her island like four times. My brother-in-law has been on it, and like I, there's here, here's there, the there's deal: you either need to continue Sekiro or get Crossing. No, hey, oh. so like, you know, there is three. Oh. There are three switches <laughs> right now that are traveling around, and all three of them have Animal Crossing. Oh, two of them have Animal Crossing, and one is the like go in between, while one is the the, the charge. Switch. <laughs> that's what it's that's called a now. Great system. I was like, oh my god! And they're like, you need to get it. I was like, no. Look, you guys are like, it's a perfect quarantine game, and I would be gone. Like, <laughs> you would I, be. I like sleep. I'm at like. I like to work, and I have games I'm, on the back, like backlog. I I'm north of. I'm north of 300 hours now. Oh, are you? <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm north of 300 hours now. I don't even know how many hours I'm at. Dude, I mean, dude, you could go look at my profile and tell me if it's like how far over 300 hours it is. I'm gonna go check the dude, I'm gonna go I have, through. I have built out like museum area that's got like now I've turned it in like an air and space museum, so I've got like a couple of space shuttles, the Apollo 11 sitting out in front of my museum. I built a diner. Like, okay. with the boot, like... You're at 2.45. I'm at 2.45 now? Okay. Oh, All right, wow. so... I still got 50 hours. I think I can get that in a week. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I built out a diner. I mean, I've, I've done a lot of work on my island, and I'm at to the point now where my island is about the way I want it. Uh, there's a lot of people that go out and really just do more with their islands, but I'm like, mm, kind of where I'm at. I like it. I'm at... At that point now where I can hop in, do a little daily stuff, and then be done with my day. Which is kind of what Theo likes, except for Theo just keeps on going. Um, but I haven't finished my island. Yeah. You, you need to finish your island. You know, you have that one wall that you got to run around. Yeah, I know. I mean, it's fully under construction. And I just, it, like I told you earlier, like I'm losing motivation to build my island more because i'm always short on money <laughs> okay so it always, buy, buy always takes forever to get money i buy turtles and that's what really helped me with your island the other day doubling okay. my money 
but I only for... had like two hundred thousand, so I'm up to four hundred. I need like five million. Well, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's true. It, it really is. Oh. Um, but yeah, other than that, I'm but... I moved on, got passed through uh through Wall Market outside of that. Nice. Did you? And have the I... question, as always, did you uh finish up uh a certain game? Uh, I, or, I or is it just little, Animal Crossing I, now? Um, no, I did. I did play a little Luigi's Mansion Three. King Boo is still kicking my butt. Just, I got him down to. I got him to stage three or the the final phase for him, and then it's just like it's three of him. Okay. So it's just sell him It's a matter of kind of getting that <laughs> right. Here's some turnips. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, but I uh, continued to finish out the last little bit of my regular season on. MLB the show, 19, so I can move on to 20. Um, still hold that. I wish Jerry was here so I could tell him this, but I still hold a seven and a half game lead over the Dodgers with 14 games left to go. Well, you can keep building that, so just so you can rub it into his face when Did he finally you? joins oh, us again. So it'll be nice when I, I take that picture and I show that hey, they didn't even make the playoffs <laughs> because right now they are not even. They are like eight games out of the wild card so in order for them to get to playoffs they have to beat me (laughs) which epic collapse so jason what have you been playing um i've been staying on final fantasy 14 right now um i i love that oh oh yes i do 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 you play as well (laughs) you got your first member for the raid team (laughs) (laughs) no i do play it um I, I play it a lot, actually. Yeah, what uh, what server are you on? I am current, so I was on Cactar, and now I'm on Sargatanus. I think Sargatanus, that's how you say yeah. It. yeah. Yeah, I am on Brunhilder, and it is. Uh, I've been looking for a raid team for the last couple of weeks right now, but as right now, it's waiting for the night, the last Eden's verse. So I've just been trying to get those dragon mounts. So it's and I haven't I had like I I lost a lot of time uh when Shadowbringers came out so um I just caught up and I was like okay well there's a lot of stuff that has gone by and nobody's doing that content anymore so I'm like oh I'll just wait I'll wait it out. Do you get an idea, Daniel, how much Jason loves that game? Oh, Pretty much at E3, that's where he's at. Uh, oh. He's camped out over Final Fantasy 14 to get the only shirt. reason why he goes. Uh, it's not the this. only no. reason why I go. It is the main reason. Not the only. That's your reason. highlight. It's yeah, a highlight. highlight. Yo, like give me the yeah. like. I beat <laughs> Tantania. You know, I beat Shiva. I've beaten. I've beaten. Who Ronald. haven't you like, beat? When it comes out <laughs> to the battle challenge, when it comes to the battle challenge, I got this. I got it. I got it. I'll help other nice. people. Get it. So, Danielle, if you're there at the next E3 and they do have another battle challenge, let's hit me up. Oh, if, Bree's, if Bree's there, too, because Bree that's plays as it. well. So no, Brianna plays, too. Oh, yeah. you gotta yeah. do it. So, like, we're that's three, if three we people get, in. That's if we get another E3. Well, that's, I yeah. that. that's true. You know, Don't say it, man. We'll see if they can recover from this. You know, I'm, mm. you know we're all a little salty because we got you know, media passes this year and, yeah. you know, and then they said, Hey, by the way, it's canceled. You know, COVID. Thanks a lot. That's um, okay. I just hope they take the time to rethink their past year decisions for running that show. <laughs> right. I agree. You know, you know, he ain't going back. You know, Sony's not going back. Well, no, I mean, they've had even success with Sony's, their own shows. Even though Sony's on the board. Um, so Danielle, I, we, we got a question for you that we ask all of our guests. Mm-hmm. is what is your favorite game to play for game night with your family and friends? What's my favorite family and friend or game to play with my family and friends? Game, game night. Yeah, when you have a game night with family, friends, whatever, what is your oh. favorite game to play? Whether it's console, board game, whatever it is, what's your favorite game? Um, I either like to play, and I guess it's not... I guess it'll be like adult family members, not like kids or anything. I'd like to play Cards Against Humanity a lot. That's my go-to. Yes. Or yes. we got Jackbox. Nice. So it's one of the two. <laughs> nice. Cards or Against Mario Humanity. Party. Mario Party is another one. Which Mario Party? Oh my goodness. <laughs> yes. 
Well, while you think of that one, which Jackpot game do you like the most? There's a lot. I love I love TKO. TKO. A little too much. I love Trivia Murder Party, I think that's what it's called. Uh, <laughs> you know, Jack. Yeah, you, you, you um, answer trivia questions and you hope to not get murdered in the process. Yep. That sounds awesome. I want to play that it's game. It's so fun. Ooh, oh, it's that, so yeah. fun. <laughs> nice. So one of these days we should we, one of these days we should actually get a lot of guests on and just like play a few of these Jackpot games. That would be great. Because they, Dude, they be are fun. they are fun and they are hilarious. Mm-hmm. Like I love Quiplash, just because it's it's so out there. Like you can type your own answers. So it's yeah. a little. It depends on who you play with, though, too. But mm-hmm, that's yeah, cool. even Cards Against Humanity, it's yeah, you know, it depends on who I you play can't, with. I can't, I can't get away with saying some of the things that I would with our group <laughs> if other people are around. <laughs> um, so yeah, so yeah, as we kind of wind things out for tonight, why don't you let the listeners know where they can find you on social media? Of course. Uh, so I'm on Twitter at Danielle MCVO. I have, and I should use it a lot more, a Facebook page at Danielle McRae VO Artist. And I have a Twitch channel at uh, Danielle McRae One, which I'm going to be playing some more of a seven remake. But what I'm probably going to do <laughs> is take everything I got from a hard mode and take it into normal mode and see how fast I'm going to go like through that game with all the stuff I earned from a hard mode. Okay. Nice. <laughs> so it's kind of like a speed run, kind of it's on an easier mode. <laughs> oh, do it, do it. Try and get the speed run, the the speed run yes. record in. Oh yes. Very nice. Well, Danielle, I do want to say, you know, thank you for coming on Crashing Game Night with us. Um, it's been fun, and yes. like we open invitation that yes, you know, please come back anytime. anytime. You want to come back, hang out, you know. I'd Next time we want to we won't have to talk about your career. We can just actually talk about gaming now that we're probably gonna start seeing some more news as the the new consoles start ramping up and getting closer. And rumors of Horizon Two for a launch title on PS Five hopefully come <laughs> to fruition. Oh, oh, yeah, so I I've had a lot of fun here. I I had a lot of fun meeting everybody and talking to everyone. Oh, I'd yeah. love to come. I'd win. Absolutely. I'd be awesome. Thank you. Yeah, anytime. Oh, definitely. Anytime. So to all of our listeners, as always, thank you for crashing game night with us tonight. Uh, if you like what you heard, as always, make sure to follow us on the podcasting platform that you are listening to us on. Uh, also, keep in mind, we did move over to Anchor.fm as our permanent hosting site. So uh, definitely, if the platform you listen to doesn't have us on there, you can go to Anchor.fm, request it. They're working hard to get us on other platforms right now. Also, CrashingGameNight.com. I want to say, everyone, be excellent to each other and stay frosty. Just want to shout out to uh, Danielle. Thank you again so much for being on here. Um, so welcome. One of these, yeah, like I said, uh, we'll, we get, we'll get some Final Fantasy fourteen together sometime. We'll, yes, all three we of us, me, me and Bree, we'll yes. do a we'll do a duty finder. Um, uh-huh. But raid <laughs> Yeah, start the raid team. Um, yeah. But definitely. Uh, uh, Thank you very much for coming on, and it's always a pleasure. As like Matt said, you're more than welcome to come back, crash game night anytime you want, even if we're in the middle of the podcast, just crash it however you want. Is it like John? <laughs> John, exactly. I'll remember that. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Always. All right, see you. All right, guys, thanks for joining us. TTFN, ta ta for now. Have a good night, everybody.